Hey, I'm Victor Margiotta, and this is The Community Show. Thank you for watching. I always like to thank my crew for helping out, uh, Kaz, Cecilia, and uh, Joe, and Helen. Thank you so much, guys. If it wasn't for you guys, the show would not happen. We, uh, we are very lucky tonight. We have John Testa. Don't ask me how we got him. He's a very busy guy, so uh, we got him here. We got plenty to talk about. Uh, I always like to start off by asking my guests where they grew up. You know, it gives a sense of community. And I think uh, community is, is the cornerstone of, well, the family is the cornerstone of the community. And uh, that's why I like to talk about family first and then get into how we can get involved in the community. It's so important. Um, I know growing up, you couldn't get away with doing something in the neighborhood without, you know, your neighbor knowing what was going on, and you know, you tell your parents. But that's, how, you know, that's how we were disciplined. That's how we grew up, and it was, uh, it was a community thing, and it's so important. And I wish we can get back to that, and I think we can, as long as people get involved. And for me, you know, I have eight brothers and one sister, and you know, I knew all their friends and all their families, and. My parents had a restaurant, so we grew up knowing a lot of people. And uh, it's just a great feeling to know a lot of people and to feel like you're part of a community. So that's why I like to start off with where you grew up. Well, thank you for having me. It's always great to be here. Thanks, John. Uh, I grew up in the city of Peekskill. Mm -hmm. uh, my whole life in the city of Peekskill. My great-grandfather came here in the 1890s, and uh, we've been here ever since. Yeah. And uh, it's been a wonderful experience to grow up in Peekskill and then to become a teacher as I was for 33 years yeah. before I retired three years ago. Yeah. And then to get involved in other ways with the community, being a council person and yes. then the mayor and now the county legislator. So, yeah. And to raise my family here has been a pleasure and a yeah. privilege as well. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because whenever I go out you know, and I'm with people, why do you have to know everybody? Now, <laughs> that's got to be the same situation with you, right? Well, as you know, every time I come down to uh, the oh, restaurant oh, with the sure. family, or any, I, yeah. it's, it's part of the job, and yeah. I enjoy it, and, you know, it's all good. Yep. People want to just say hi and yeah. give you good, good thoughts it and good wish you the now. best and, yeah. and see how things are because they get to know you over a long time, oh, you know. Oh, for sure. And, you know, I usually know the person either from going to school with them, mm -hmm. uh, teaching them. Yeah or because of my position in government, getting to meet them through various organizations sure. or events or right. just in general. So uh, it's right. always a pleasure. Yeah. It really is. And, uh, and with you, with teaching, man, you've got to know a lot of people. Yeah, well, it's, it was very helpful to uh, get to know the community through the students that I had. And obviously, <laughs> growing up here, I know all sections of the city and yeah. I know all, you know, what goes on right. on all areas. So For it was sure. a, a real... Um, uh, advantage for me being the mayor and being mm -hmm. elected to have all that yeah. prior knowledge. Definitely. Now, how long have you been uh, the county legislator? I've been. Just, I'm in my fourth term. Believe wow. it or not, I'm in yeah. my seventh year awesome. as a county legislator. Mm -hmm. I was mayor for six, and now I'm county legislator for seven. So it goes fast. Yeah. Um, but it's been a, a real uh, pleasure to be able to not only right now represent not only Peekskill, right. District 1, which is the district I represent, yes. also goes into the town of Cortland and the Tri-Village area, right. as well as uh, the northern half of Yorktown. So it's a much larger district. Yeah. So I've got, I get to help all of northern Westchester, which is really Excellent. nice. Yeah. So what does the job entail? Well, basically what we do as a county legislative board, which probably is the least understood level of government, yeah. even for me at, uh, before I got involved, to be honest with you. But uh, county government uh, basically... Uh, if you think of uh, Congress, you know, mm -hmm. there's a president and then there's the Congress of the Senate and the Assembly. Well, in the county level, there's the county executive who happens to be Rob Astorino right yes. now. Mm -hmm. And then there's the county board of legislators, which is the legislative branch, mm -hmm. the executive branch being the uh, county executive. Yeah. So uh, we do our deliberations of county laws and issues through the committee process. We have various committees. Yeah. And then um, if an issue gets through the committees, goes to the floor, which we have two meetings a month uh, to vote on um, as a full group. Mm -hmm. And if it gets passed through there and the, and the um, county executive agrees and signs it, then it becomes law or goes into effect, whatever, depending on if it's an act or right. a local law or just uh, an issue of uh, 
working with the local community for whatever reason they need something past the intermunicipal agreement mm -hmm. or whatever. So that's the kind of thing we do. Uh, mm -hmm. We have some global issues of the county that we help with our municipalities, such as sewer and water are yeah. very big. You know, there's a county sewer system. So uh, there's county police, there's county, you know, uh, organizations that we deal with that mm -hmm. help municipalities. So yeah. that's in a nutshell what we do. Right. What kind of reading do you have to do to keep up with? What oh, there's you're always. Doing? I mean, yeah. everything is reading. You know, right. obviously, there's a lot of laws and yeah. background uh, supportive information based on various previously passed laws by mm -hmm. other locations. Sometimes, yeah. uh, what a legislator will do, we'll see something that was done maybe in another state or another part of the of the state yeah. uh, at the state level, and decide that maybe that's something the county. And for example, there's uh, there's been some issues with this, you know we just got done with the Fourth of July, yeah. and uh, the state legislator le uh, passed um, to have sparklers in New York State. So everybody okay. thought that throughout New York State the sparklers and fireworks were legal, yeah. and they started selling them. But that's not the case. The case is uh, each individual county also had to adopt it. Uh -huh. So what the state did was they said if the county adopts it. They can sell only sparklers. Yeah. Uh, Westchester, we never went that far. We did not pass it. The fire departments were very concerned about it, understandably. Uh, so we uh, listen to them, which we do. We bring groups in and they uh, bring their testimony and their reasons to support or not support something. Yeah. That was something easy not to support because of the nature of the sparklers. When we were kids, you're used to just a sparkler on a stick. Yeah. It's a much bigger and broader thing oh, now. Okay. Uh, things shoot in the air, oh my so which falls into that category. Mm -hmm. So they were nervous about it. Yeah. So some counties did pass it and some didn't. So that, yeah. that's a, an issue right there where the county is directly involved. Right. What are some of the uh, major achievements that you've been able to accomplish? Well, what I've tried to do is uh, concentrate on what is needed in northern Westchester throughout my area uh, mm -hmm. that I represent. You know, it, it's, it's a struggle sometimes. It has been for my predecessors as well. And I've really concentrated on focusing on our area. You know, a majority of the legislators represent uh, Mount Vernon, um, White Plains, mm -hmm. New Rochelle. Those are big cities, and they have multiple representative so yeah. uh, we just have uh, myself and uh, Mike Kaplowitz from Yorktown yeah. uh, representing the northern part so we work closely together and what I've been trying to do is upgrade the infrastructure that the county owns in northern Westchester mm -hmm. people don't realize we have Blue Mountain Park which we've gotten a lot of upgrades for um, down uh, George's Island is another county park mm -hmm. which we got a lot of if you notice all the paving that was done a few years nice. ago and the, the new boat launch, I was yeah. able to get that down there. Right. And in the last couple of years, we have uh, road reconstruction. All of Main Street that the county uh, owns was reconstructed. Mm -hmm. And then Route 202 was just done last year. And now we're just starting to move forward on getting Washington Street and right. Welcher Avenue. A lot of roads are yeah. uh, in uh, northern Westchester that the county is in control of. Yeah. So I've been trying to really concentrate on that. Yeah. And another major area is, I, I'm, as you know, I'm very big with uh, senior citizens and mm -hmm. veterans. They've, I've really uh, taken uh, a lot of my uh, key from them uh, and to really support them. I think they deserve more than they get, but I try to bring as much as I can to their, sure. to their assistance. And I noticed that um, there's a, a legal firm called the Legal Services of the Hudson Valley that... Um, provides free legal services for veterans and seniors. And mm -hmm. their offices were in Mount Vernon and White Plains. And I didn't think it was fair for the veterans and seniors of Northern Westchester to have to get on a bus or try to travel. It's not easy for them to oh. do. So it took me a couple of years, but I was able to establish through them and with county executives help and my colleagues, all, they all agreed uh, to support it. And we passed it where we have now an office for Northern Westchester. It's located in Peekskill, one park place, and, but they'll come, and they. I just met with the Buchanan seniors a couple of weeks ago, Excellent. informed them about it, and yeah. we can get them to come and meet with our seniors and veterans and help them get free legal services oh, and the veterans as well. So veterans need help getting yeah. sometimes just the simple part of getting their forms filled out mm -hmm. and getting um, maybe some some challenge to their care. Seniors as well, they have issues. You know, sometimes they don't have children. Yeah. You. Your parents were lucky. You had yeah. a, a lot of kids there yeah. uh, who helped them throughout yeah, all their for sure. their issues. Uh, some people don't have that yeah. luxury, yeah. and some unfortunately some seniors get yeah. taken advantage of by their own yeah, uh, right. 
uh, children. kids, so yeah. children. So, uh, which is really something that upsets I me. Know. So uh, we, we do what we can to help the seniors and, yeah. and the veterans in, through that office, and yeah. very proud of that. Yeah. Well, that's one thing about living in New York. The roads constantly have to be fixed. It's, Always. Infrastructure know, is very, for safety as well, it's very, yeah. very important. And look at here with the Tappan Zee Bridge. You know, it's, yep. it's not the oldest bridge, but it turned out it needed to be redone. And it's funny how all, just in the last five years we've heard about all these cranes falling. Oh, wow, well, yeah. And uh, I have a friend that says, look, you don't always hear about it, but when it's uh, somebody dies or it's in a city like New York, you're going to hear about yeah. it. But these are just things that happen. And the one that was just uh, we just learned about at the Tappan yeah. Zee, that was a brand new uh, crane. So right. who knows why it happened, yeah. but... Um, Unfortunately, unfortunately, <coughs> nobody was hurt. No, that unfortunately, was amazing. Unfortunately, and, and only damaged the old bridge. Mm -hmm. That's eventually going to be torn yeah, down. Torn didn't down damage anyway. the new bridge. Yeah, so, so there was some at least fortunate right. um, connections to it. But yeah, yeah you, you don't. You just never know uh, no. when but, those things happen. But he did say these are things that happen all the time, but you just don't hear about it because right. it's not. Um, and in Westchester, we have the park system, as I mentioned. Mm -hmm. and Flooding issues are very prevalent, especially uh, a little bit south of us. Yeah, we're lucky up here; we don't get it as as bad, but we mm -hmm. don't because we don't have the river system really on both sides of our roads yeah, as we have right. with the spring and have, yeah. and the Bronx River. You know, they flood very very easily. I know when I'm down there for a meeting, yeah. if it starts raining in the evening, and I know I'm mm -hmm. not going home for four or five hours, and it's raining, I'm wondering if the road's going to be closed before I have to go home. Yeah, and it's an issue, and it's happened a few times. So. Yeah. Uh, those are the issues we're always working on, and that's mm -hmm. why we work together as a group of 17. There are 17 of us. And, you know, something might be important to me in my district, mm -hmm. not affecting others, but they understand, and we all try to work together, yeah. help us uh, in each district, as well as the global county issues yeah. as we are with um, Playland mm -hmm. is, is a big one, and yeah. the housing settlement as well. The you know, affordable housing settlement are two big issues we're dealing with yeah. as well. Do you have a, uh, a go-to guy to kind of like a mentor to help you? Well, the person who probably helps me the most, uh, I can talk to the county executive, mm -hmm. but uh, he's a busy guy too. So the guy I go to who's been wonderful to me, I've known him for a very long time, is George Oros yeah. from the town of Corland. He's the um, executive to um, um, county executive, mm -hmm. uh, chief of staff is his title. Yep. And he was my predecessor in this job, so he knows yeah, what, yeah. what ne is needed in this job. Sure. So if there's uh, someone I need to talk to to find a, an avenue of getting something done, mm -hmm. he, he's the guy, I will, I will, and he helps uh, yeah. anytime I need it. Mike Kaplowitz in, in Yorktown, he's a member uh, on the other side of the aisle from me, but he's yeah. the chairman of, of the uh, board. And he's a great guy. We get along very well. We work closely together. We share Yorktown. Mm -hmm. He's part of the coalition that we have formed of, of nine legislators. You know, you need nine votes to pass anything. Um, there are uh, ten re uh, Democrats. There are seven Republicans. But what we've been able to do is with, with uh, Mike Kaplowitz and Virginia Perez from Yonkers, we've got together to form a coalition of nine mm -hmm. that we work together on a lot of things to make sure things pass. Some people like to make things slow up, and uh, sometimes that's good to yeah. take a, a pace. But right. most of the time, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's better to move things along. You get more things done, yeah. and you get things uh, on the ground quicker. So mm -hmm. we've been great working together. So it's been, that's great. you know, six it, budgets in a row of 0% tax go. increase. So no. uh, we're doing something right. Yeah, it, it makes a difference when people are working together you have to. rather than yeah you have to work together although you know we see it too much in other locations like in Washington for example again um, it's just getting out of control yeah. where the nobody works together everything right. a, has a political motive behind yeah. it some people are like that but um, other people like in our coalition especially mm -hmm. we don't let that get in the way mm -hmm. uh, if it's the right thing to do it's the right thing to do it doesn't matter whose idea it is doesn't matter what party it comes from so um, we just try to use that as our barometer. You know, Excellent. what's good for the people mm -hmm. is good for us. Excellent. Okay, so you're the minority leader right. of the Board of Legislators. What does that mean? Well, uh, each caucus, you know, there's a Democratic caucus, mm -hmm. there's the Republican caucus, and then there's the chairman of the board and the vice chairman of the board. Um, the Democrats have 
as I said, 10, so they have the majority. So the majority leader, Catherine Borgia of Ossining, actually comes from, uh, is the minority, as a majority leader from yeah. uh, uh, the, uh, her caucus. I'm what's known as the minority leader because we're the minority with only seven. Mm -hmm. So my seven colleagues, or six colleagues, voted to make me the leader of the caucus. So when we have leadership uh, directive meetings between the minority leader, majority leader, and the chairman and vice chairman, we get together and we kind of set the legislative agenda. Uh, sometimes we try to solve issues before they come to the full board to save time and to work out through the details. Mm -hmm. So it's been a, a pleasure. I'm in my fourth year or third year now in my, in, uh, my second term uh, doing it. So uh, it's been a real, I like it because it gets me even more deeper involved in the issues and gets me more involved on a day-to-day -day basis rather than just one or two days a week mm -hmm. uh, in committee meetings. I'm yeah. involved every single day with something, so, yeah, right. uh, but it, it's good. I, I like that. Well, that's why I appreciate you coming on the yeah. show. I know you are very busy. And uh, I know you have some other projects going on besides. Yeah, I mean, uh, as you uh, probably, uh, it's hard for people in this area not to know. We talk yeah. about it a lot, the Lincoln Museum, mm -hmm. the Depot Museum down in Peekskill. Yeah. Um, for a little bit of the history, back in 1861 in February, February 19th to be exact, mm -hmm. uh, President-elect Lincoln uh, was traveling on a train from his hometown of Springfield to Washington, D.C., and he made stops along the way. But in Westchester, the only stop he made was in Peekskill, and he stopped and he gave a speech to the whole community. Actually, no. people came from as far away as Connecticut and New Yorktown and, and such, and Dutchess County came down to, to see the speech. Mm -hmm. He was only here a short time, yeah. uh, but it was a very significant event for us. And luckily, um, the area that he made that speech and uh, the depot, uh, was w preserved over the years. It was privately mm -hmm. owned uh, at, for, at one point when I was mayor, and thanks to Governor Pataki at the yeah, time, who understood right. the history because sure. he was mayor here himself. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to really explain to him the importance <laughs> of it. Uh, he agreed, and he helped us get the money to first purchase the building, yep. and then to restore the building. It, it was on the original spot, and there has been some upgrades upgrades, maybe 100-year-old upgrades, yeah, but, you know, right. there, as any building over time needs changes made to it. Uh, so it's, it's, the, it's the core building with some additional uh, elements from, you know, addition, you know, years after Lincoln mm -hmm. came. But it's the original location, and now it's a full-fledged museum, Civil War uh, Lincoln Museum. And, and, and the title of the exhib exhibition is Lincoln and um, the, uh, his relationship to the indispensable relationship of him to New York mm -hmm. through his election and through the Civil War. So we have not just Lincoln himself, but there's a lot of local connections involved, Chauncey Depew being one, William Nelson, who's the person who uh, invited Lincoln to stop, who was his friend in Congress. They were yeah. congressmen together. So there's a whole, and, and New York being uh, the state that had the most enrolled soldiers and most um, casualties in, in the Civil War. Wow. So. Um, we have some really wonderful original uh, artifacts. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of events there. People come every, it's open every weekend from 1 to 4, uh, from April to uh, November. Okay. Uh, Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 4, come in. Mm -hmm. We have events all the time. And uh, it's just been a real eye-opener for me. I knew it was something would be popular, yeah. Yeah. but it's, it's not only uh, nationwide becoming popular, but um, worldwide. We've had visitors from Australia who heard about it, who came on wow. purposely to see it. Wow. So it's it's moving as we speak right. uh, with a new building being built that's going to be a visitor center and mm -hmm. offices and a gift shop and a lecture area. We want it to be a real educational research center. Yeah. So there's a lot going on there and yeah. it's going to continually uh, change. So hopefully right. people will come. Can you explain to us the importance of history? Why is this so important? Well, uh, you know, uh, we're in a presidential year. I know we don't yeah. want to get into the presidential no. politics, but uh, <laughs> There's enough of that going it's on. always <laughs> important to see what happened in the past mm -hmm. and know what people experienced and really um, the hard work and the decision-making that was done yeah. to make the world what it is today. Right. In the United States, we like to know, uh, say we are we're the most unique and best country ever formed, right? Sure. Uh, we have a democracy. We have a certain... 
uh, form of government and people before such as Lincoln and mm -hmm. the people who fought in the Civil War to keep it that way, yeah. uh, to stop slavery, obviously, and yeah. to uh, move the country forward as a country rather than mm -hmm. a separated split. states yeah. and split. Um, so it's important to know the hard work that was done to create what we have yeah. and how important it is to keep it and to work hard now to make sure it doesn't fracture and of disintegrate before our eyes, which could easily yeah. happen. Yeah. What about any other projects that you're working on? You well, what I try to do, I, I work very closely with Mayor Catalina in the city mm -hmm. of Peekskill, yep. Supervisor Puglisi in Cortland, okay. and Supervisor Grace in Yorktown. I'm always meeting with them or mm -hmm. with the boards or uh, talking to them about their issues, yeah. either through email or on phone or in person. There's always something that needs to be done somewhere, and yeah. uh, I try to help every group. I work closely with the veterans. You know, the, yeah. the local American Legion is very active. Uh, the veterans in Cortland are very active mm -hmm. with the Montrose and yeah. trying to save the, the facilities there, which I think we've yeah. been very successful in doing. Now it's to bring back some of the... Um, care that the veterans need there mm -hmm. and to always make sure that I'm accessible to anybody who needs me and that's what I try to do. Right. But the issues, the, the county-wide issues are very key right now. Mm -hmm. This affordable housing um, settlement that was uh, voted on in 2009, the year before I took office in 2010, so I wasn't yeah. a part of it. But <laughs> it's there you go, it, somebody yeah. else voted on something, but we're, uh, we are we um, are same with uh, County Executive Astorina. We weren't there to approve it, but now we are now we have to implement yeah, it. Sure. And we have to the end of this year to build the 750 units oh my gosh. of affordable housing uh, with not, not just build them, but or, uh, approve them, but to have building permits yeah. for them. And so now uh, we're in July and mm -hmm. we have to the end of this year. And I think we'll get there uh, from what we understand. We have the units, but it's not done till it's done. So uh, we're working on that and working yeah. with the federal government, which is never easy to do, yeah. um, as well as Playland, which is something that really doesn't affect us that much in the no, north. It's, uh, people it's go there, than, yeah. uh, but not as much as they used to maybe, mm -hmm. uh, but it is a, uh, a huge money loser for the county. Oh, yes. uh, revenue loss is, mm -hmm. is tremendous there. So it does affect us in our taxes. Yeah. So, uh, and I know a lot of people love it who go there, sure. but there are, it's, it's old, it's, you know, it from the 1920s. Be, yeah, not only is so, it losing money, but you got to put money into it. So the goal has been, uh, since the county executive, Estorino, came on board, and I agree with him, we, we can't just let it be a four, three or four month no. um, location. We have to have a way of bringing revenue in on a 12 month basis mm -hmm. if possible, help pay it off. So yeah. Uh, we have a new operators that are going to be privately running it in cooperation with the county, mm -hmm. and that's in the process of being finalized as well. Right now, what we're trying to do is decide whether or not to rebuild the pool that's there. Oh. It's a gigantic pool. Yeah. It's since the 20s. It's falling apart. It's on a structure. It's not in the ground so much as it's built as a structure, oh, okay. and it's just to the point where you can't patch it anymore. No. It leaks too much, and... Uh, the operators don't want to have the pool anymore since there is a beach and the sound yeah. is right yeah. there. Uh, but some people want the pool, so we're in that mm -hmm. that debate right now yeah. uh, what to do with the pool. We have until the end of uh, September to decide. Mm -hmm. But everything else is moving forward with the new amusement park will be put in place, and it's going to be a beautiful place. Excellent. Is there any way people can get involved? I know there's uh, somebody like me. I work six days a week, my day off. I like to go golfing. You know, how can I get involved in the local government? Well, there's lots of ways you can get involved. You can get involved through organizations. Mm -hmm. uh, there's the Elks. There's yep. uh, uh, various other organizations. If you're a veteran, obviously through the veterans uh, organizations. Or each municipality has their own boards and commissions. Mm -hmm. You might want to be on the conservation. And uh, that's how I started on the conservation uh, and Parks Advisory Board. That's okay. how I started back in the day, when, as they say, yeah. when I first got involved. Uh, there's zoning boards, planning boards, you know, there's all, you know, go yeah. to your local government and just tell them what you're interested in and they'll find a place for you. Okay. Uh, you know, I always try to stay positive with the show, but um, we just lost another young person to yeah. this heroin epidemic. And it's just heartbreaking. It's, it's horrible. I lost. In the last year and just a month ago, a st former student of mine who was a very who I really loved it was mm -hmm. a, a girl who was uh, very um, 
good student, and I helped her through high school. Mm -hmm. She had some issues, and unfortunately, I, I, I found out through the grapevine what happened, and yeah. it really, really bothered me for a long yeah. time. And whenever something happens to one of my former students yeah. in a negative way, it bothers me for, right. for a while. Of course. Uh, but uh, I've been working closely with Senator Terrence Murphy mm -hmm. from Yorktown, who yeah. represents Peekskill and Cortland as yeah. well. He's been in the forefront of uh, uh, the anti-heroin um, task force mm -hmm. that he's formed, in, uh, and Yorktown has one. We're looking to do one here in the in Peekskill area. Yeah. Uh, it has to be a, a constant, vigilant effort to yeah. make sure that, because sometimes, you know, uh, uh, a person gets involved with heroin not because they're necessarily looking to get involved with herring, but yeah. maybe they were in an accident or maybe they were a student yep. in, even in high school who had a bad injury, ended up having painkillers, pain killers. and then as time goes on, uh, they get to the point where they're, they're addicted to that and yeah. then they look for something cheaper and, and easier to get, yeah. and it just spirals out exactly. of control. So that's, we need to educate, say. we need to prevent, and we need to really ha come together as a community to make sure that we uh, combat this. and. Yeah. I'm, I'm there to help uh, Terrence and anyone else. Yeah. A lot of people want to really take to, yeah. to the next step in right. this area. We have to well, do that's, that. And that's another thing I think people should try and get involved in. in you it's know. a perfect thing. Go uh, through uh, Terrence Murphy's office, okay. Senator Murphy. You can contact me. Obviously, anybody can contact right. me about anything yeah. through my email or phone and uh, be happy to talk to them. I have a website, johngtesta.com. Okay. Be happy to help them there. They can get involved with the Lincoln Museum uh, yeah. just if they're interested in history. Sure. Uh, there's other museums in the area, Peekskill Museum, yep. Yorktown Town has a Corland. museum, uh, Town of Cortland has a museum. So if you're interested in history, mm -hmm. you can always do that as well. So yeah. uh, there's many ways you can do that. And I'll, I'll be happy to help anyone. Cool. We just have a couple of minutes left. Sure. Uh, were you able to go on vacation? Did you go to Not yet. Short? Not oh, yet. Uh, I, I, I snuck away. We, My wife and I, what we tried to do because of the crazy schedule I have that we can't have extended uh, time away yeah, unless we really right. plan ahead, which we, 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 yeah. we will all do soon. Mm -hmm. I like the fall, so oh, okay. I like to go out uh, when the when the leaves are changing mm -hmm. and a little cooler, yeah. but we do try to get away uh, for small joints yeah. in, uh, in the summer, and uh, uh, we'll do that. We get down to uh, visit her family in New Jersey sometimes, or we'll go to New England, which yeah. I love. Yeah. I always have to have a history Stop, yeah. like last year we went to uh, uh, Braintree and uh, Quincy, uh, Massachusetts to oh, visit John awesome. Adams' home. Yep. You know, I always have something connected to it. I just, yeah. the way yeah. it's always been. My kids are used to that uh, growing up. That's what we did, so yeah. it's always fun. Yeah. We had a little vacation. I got a garden. It's almost like yeah. having a pet, you know. Yeah, you oh, can't yeah. just leave them at home, you know, yeah. especially the heat we've had. Exactly. You know, and, and uh, there's not much, much rain, so oh. uh, now we're looking into a drought possibly, yeah. so. People are having a problem with their gardens, right. but you got to get I, those tomatoes. I'm telling I can't wait. <laughs> 30 tomato plants I got this year. I always go overboard, but I, I give them away. I like to, um, you know, my mother once said, you like Santa Claus. You're giving away all these tomatoes. You find different salads you can make. Yeah, you find different ways to use sure. them. I used to love having um, tomato sandwiches when I was a kid. Uh, so there's always a way to oh, use a tomato. Definitely. Italians always find a way to use oh, a tomato. Sure. Listen, I really Thank appreciate you so much. It. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. All Anytime. Right. So this is the community show. Thanks for watching. And if you can, please get involved. Don't complain about things. See what you can do to help out. So thanks for watching.